Jackson is the largest city in Mississippi, 80% of the population black, and it's becoming pretty clear now that floods may have triggered this water crisis, but advocates like our next guest say it's environmental racism that's making it worse. Mustafa Santiago Ali is executive vice president of the National Wildlife Federation. He's also the founder and CEO of Revitalization Strategies, working as a strategist and policymaker for environmental justice. Good to see you, Dr. Ali. Thank you for having me, Kara. It's nice to be with you. Well, you have worked with more than 500 domestic and international communities. What do you make of what's going on right now in Jackson, Mississippi? Well, it's a tragedy that's happening. It's an emergency that's going on that did not have to happen. We've known about the impacts that were happening to the water infrastructure in Jackson, and there has been inaction by so many. Uh, especially those in, in the state house uh, and others who have refused to make the investments that are necessary to protect people's lives. We have to be very careful in this moment. We don't want to make Jackson a sacrifice zone. You know, Jackson's uh, motto is Jackson is a city with soul. The question becomes, are we going to protect those souls, those 80 percent African-Americans who are living there, along with the other brothers and sisters who are there? Are we going to be willing to, to make the investments? Are we going to be able to actually come together to make real change happen? We know the history throughout the South in relationship to the disinvestment in black communities historically. We don't have to hold on to the sins of the past. We can actually move forward and make sure that we are doing the things that are necessary to protect people's health, uh, to also make sure that we are helping to strengthen their economic situation, uh, and to get ready to deal with the climate crisis that we see each and every day now. All right, so you've named it. It's not a new problem. Uh, the, Jackson's dealt with years of uh, dealing with this old and aging water system, and you've got a community that's predominantly black. So how does Jackson get justice here? H how do you move forward, especially when the mayor says it's going to take billions of dollars to get to, get to the place where they need to be? Well, the first thing that we do is deal with the immediacy of the emergency that's going on. And it's great to see so many people coming together to make sure that folks have bottled water, they have other portable types of water to begin to, to make sure that we are addressing that need in this moment. The other thing that we do is we get to get much more focus on policy and the resources that already exist to make sure that we are moving forward on the steps that are necessary. So we know that there are $75 million that were part of the bipartisan infrastructure bill. So we got to make sure that those dollars are actually getting to the spaces and places that need them the most. We also know that we have resources from the state revolving loan fund. So we have to make sure, one, a quick analysis to see where are those dollars going across the state of Mississippi? Are they actually going to our most vulnerable communities? We also have to make sure that we are building up the health infrastructure to make sure that folks are dealing with some of the impacts that could come from this, from bacteria and viruses and parasites and a number of other things. So in this moment, we need to be able to come together, make those investments, make sure we're doing an environmental justice analysis as well. So let's talk about the Biden administration's Inflation Reduction Act, which does include these historic investments in environmental justice, including establishing several new environmental justice grant programs. If you were running the show here, how would you use these grants? What would your first move be, Dr. Ali? I would put together a comprehensive strategy, and I would make sure that both the Environmental Protection Agency that is helping to lead the Environmental Justice Block Grants and some of the other grants that are water-related are coming together with a number of other folks, with folks over at HUD, at CDC and HHS. And I would also make sure that a couple of the other agencies were also a part of those sets of conversations. I would expand uh, the things that FEMA is doing in this moment uh, to make sure that we're dealing with both what's happening in this moment and as we move forward over the next set of years to build that infrastructure. Mustafa Santiago Ali, let's stay in touch and keep talking about this and let's follow where the progress goes because that's what we're banking on. Thank you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.